Consequently, the Democrat is going to experiment less because of this negative value. But remember, that's exactly what the voter wants, less experimentation. So even in this case where we have symmetric uncertainty and the known point gives the uh, voters ideal, the same result goes through. All right? The voters' utility is strictly uh, lower when the policy mapping is known than when the mapping is unknown and sequence DR is used. All right? So again, the voters better off not knowing the mapping because not knowing the mapping and the, the negative value of experimentation means that the candidates or the politicians are less inclined to experiment and that's exactly what the voter wants. All right, so whilst in this symmetric case the behavior is re the reverse, the, the politicians are less inclined to experiment. All right, it turns out in this case that's what the voter wants and so the benefit still goes the same way. Alternating power is good for the voter. All right, so I'm going to run out of time in a few minutes. So as I said, that's the kind of main result, and I've pr main gist of the, the logic and the results. So I've proved it for, well, what I've done is run you through the case where the polarization is minimized, they're at one and negative one, and the, and the known point is at negative one. The rest of the paper is then trying to show you that this effect doesn't depend upon that special case, and we can get it for larger polarization, different known points, and so forth. All right. So one case to do is just suppose we increase polarization even a little bit. So Instead of gamma is 1 and the known point negative 1, say gamma is 2 and the known point's negative 2. So just move them apart one unit. All right, so what, we can, what comes out here is we get preemptive experimenting. The democratic experiments in the first period sacrifices first period utility. And we also get a richer type of preemptive experimenting. For one range of Q values, he moves to the outcome policy 1, just as in the other case. But there's also a range of Q values where the Democrat moves the other way and moves to negative 1. All right, so again, he's moving policy such that the outcome is moving away from the Republican. So we're getting a, a as we get more polarized, we're getting a richer set of possible behavior here. All right, and so this will just take a minute. So the logic for why you move to policy one is the same. If, 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 even though we're at negative two and two now, if I fail with, if the first period experiment fails, the Republican in the second period would do a huge experiment, but he prefers to backslide to this point rather than experiment. All right, and the, the point being that backsliding to this point gives him a known outcome that's four units away from his ideal rather than some big experiment. All right, but as this known outcome is moving further away, the, the utility of backsliding in this way is getting less and less attractive. So why he might move to negative one is if the Democrat moves to negative one, and in this case, if the policy fails and we actually the outcome moves up, because as we move to the left, we're expecting the outcome to come down, Right, it's still the case that the, Democrat, the Republican in the second period would do a huge experiment and we still kind of get this stuck situation set up. But the difference now is instead of being at negative two and negative three, the stuck situation has moved up one unit and so now the choice is to get stuck at negative one rather than experiment from negative two. And so that known point is only three units from the Republican's idea. All right. So what you're doing, what the Democrats doing by experimenting to the left is changing the location in a sense of where you can get stuck. All right, so it turns out in this case you just move to the right because the, Democrat, the Republican's happy to get stuck at the status quo. But once you get outside this range, the Republican wouldn't get stuck anymore and would, would experiment with boldly in the second period. So you need to move to the left to create a different situation. All right. So as I said, the, the, the main point is that this the value of alternating power persists as they become more polarized. And the second point is that we're getting a richer set of behavior. All right, and so in fact, as we, as we become more and more polarized, we get some richer and richer set of preemptive behavior. So if we move them to three and negative three and let the known point, that should be negative three. So I'm just setting the known point equal to the Democrats ideal for simplicity. All right, the, the set of possible preemptive experiments are plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, or even three. All right, so as they become more polarized, you need to, the preemptive experiment needs to get bigger and bigger in some cases. All right, so the question then to ask is, well, does preemption continue for all levels of polarization? And what does the behavior look like as we become more and more polarized? All right, a deeper question or the more theoretical question is to say, well, what's driving this effect? All right, is it the fact that by doing a small experiment, I head off a big experiment? Or is it the fact that by having a first experiment that fails such that the successor backtracks or gets stuck at the status quo is that is what, what's driving the effect. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
switch from the discrete random walk to the continuous case to the Brownian motion. The logic and the intuition is all the same, all right, but just to kind of attack these more general questions, it's, it's easier to use the, the, the smoothness of the continuous random walk all right, and try to answer these questions. One minute. So I've got one minute, so there's no point going through results. So what I'm going to try to do is say, well, to answer this question of whether getting stuck is important, and, and the answer is going to be yes, I'm going to define a no backsliding condition. So this is saying if the Democrat experiments in the first period, is it possible for the Republican to go back to the status quo? Is it possible to get stuck? And the, first, the result is to say if that's not possible, then preemptively experimenting is never productive. All right, so the conclusion here is that this getting stuck, this possibility that an experiment fails and you go back to the status quo or back to the known point, that's crucial to the, the preemptive experimenting being profitable. All right, so I'll skip the, the rest of the results. What they go on to show is that um, essentially this preemptive experimenting is valuable for moderate and small levels of polarization, but you can reach a point that if polarization gets too great, you don't do it anymore. All right? And the Democrat always implements his ideal point. So the idea is once we kind of become too polarized, you can never appease your successor, so you might as well do your, your own ideal policy. All right. So what I've tried to do in a, in a simple model is to kind of show how alternating power offers an informational benefit to voters. And right? the fact that there's a time consistency in who's making the decision means that the early incumbents have a greater incentive to experiment and this creates an intertemporal linkage, informational link across periods, and this is actually good for voters. Right, the model is deliberately simple. There's two periods, uh, two players. I'm not modeling the election. All right, but the idea is to try to capture one mechanism about learning about policy through time and to show how, that, how, that, how the strategic incentives play out. All right, so there's many natural extensions to think about. Perhaps the most ex ex interesting ones is to think about, well, if D benefits from a policy failure, might he try to make that policy fail? All right. Is it worthwhile trying to, trying to show that your successor, that yeah, you might think you want to experiment this way, but this is just going to screw things up, so you shouldn't do that. You should just do the policy that gives me my ideal outcome. All right. So there might be an adverse selection problem. We can think about what is Q, what want to interpret as, as ideology, and we can also kind of enrich the game and think about how incentives might play out in this kind of structure. So uh, with quadratic or a utility of, of that sense, if you had uh, linear, like absolute value or square root type of utility, would you would this result still hold? Do they hinge on that or yeah. not? So what I can say straight away is it doesn't depend upon it actually being quadratic. That makes it very clean and simple. Uh, but if you're risk averse, this is certainly going to work. All right. And even if you have uh, linear utility, because you've got an interior optimum, the effect's still going to go through. Okay. All right, if you love, so because the Democrat knows his ideal point, and he's choosing a policy that gives him something definitely worse, so his risk profile isn't kicking in so much there. He's just trying to avoid a bigger experiment from the Republican in the second period. Um, now, if he was really risk-loving, I'm not sure. You know, it, it might drop out at some point for sufficiently high risk-loving preferences, but it certainly works for any risk aversion. Or linear utility. Right, so risk aversion helps, but it's not the only. Yeah. Yeah.